Good afternoon, and welcome to St. Anthony Cathedral Basilica in downtown Beaumont, where we welcome you to the solemn pontifical mass of ordination and installation of the Most Reverend David Leon Toops, who will become the sixth bishop of the Diocese of Beaumont. The cathedral is situated in a peaceful setting in historic downtown Beaumont. It was built over a hundred years ago and is one of the most resplendent houses of worship in the southwestern United States. Normally we would be able to seat about 650 people, but due to the virus, the epidemic, we are able only to handle about 200 His Eminence Cardinal DiNardo from Houston, Daniel DiNardo, will be the main celebrant, and he will have his co-consecrating bishops, Bishop Curtis Guillory, the current Bishop of Beaumont, who will soon become the Bishop Emeritus, and the second co-consecrator is the Most Reverend Edward J. Burns, the Bishop of Dallas. There will be a host of priests and laity as we prepare to enter into the cathedral for the celebration. You can see the priests coming in. There are priests from the Diocese of Beaumont and priests from Florida and Louisiana and many other places in the United States who were friends and classmates of Bishop Toops. Following the priest, there will be the bishops. As I mentioned earlier, Cardinal Daniel Donardo is the main celebrant, and there will be a host of bishops, 28 in total, accompanying him and con-celebrating this sacrament. Present also is Monsignor Joseph Foro, the representative of the Apostolic Nuncio to the United States, Archbishop Christoph Pierre. He will present the necessary documents that authorize the ordination of Monsignor Toops and his appointment as the sixth bishop of the Diocese of Beaumont. See, as the priests are entering, they are passing the baptismal font placed at the entrance of the church as the sacrament of initiation, the bringing of human life into the divine life of grace offered by Christ through his church. Each of the priests is now reverencing the main altar is a sign that they will be participating in the sacred liturgy that is to follow. The Cathedral Basilica is very similar to St. Clement's Basilica in Rome and is adorned with much of the splendor artwork that you would associate with a cathedral in Italy and other places in Europe. and his sister are here, Vicki Schaefer and Michael Toops and their families and many friends who have joined them. And now the bishops are entering the door of the cathedral.
you will have glimpses of the magnificent stained windows that adorn the cathedral, which was completely refurbished about 10 years ago. There are many deacons that are participating as well as priests in this liturgy. The bishops will be seated in a section reserved for them. The priests will have a section and there will be representatives of the permanent deacon, uh, deacons uh, and their wives for the ceremony seated in the church. close to its end and we will be seeing the entrance of the bishop elect David Tukes and he will be accompanied of course by Cardinal Gennardo and the two co-consecrating bishops. who are coming in, in addition to Cardinal Donato, are Archbishop Bernard Hebda, Archbishop Timothy Brolio, Archbishop Gregory Hartmeyer, Bishop David Talley, Bishop Michael Siss, Bishop Shelton Fogg, Bishop Joseph Strickland, Bishop Michael Boulet, Bishop Stephen Lopez, Bishop Brendan Cahill, Bishop Joe Laska, Bishop Greg Kelly, Bishop Mark Sykes, Bishop Edward Burns, Bishop William Wack, Bishop Gregory Parks, Bishop Robert Lynch, Bishop Robert Baker, Bishop Andrew Cozens, Bishop Stephen Parks, Bishop Michael Mulvey, Bishop Edmund Carmody, Bishop Stephen Rika, Bishop Michael Pfeiffer, Bishop Sam Jacobs, and Bishop George Schultz. Cardinal Gennardo is now moving into the sanctuary, who will reverence the altar, and he will go to the throne of the bishop, the throne that has been used for the last 20 years by Bishop Curtis Guillory, and he will begin the liturgy from that throne. The throne is an important aspect. The bishop's chair is a symbol of his teaching authority, and it plays an important symbolic part in the organization of the church and the uh, gathering of the clergy and the laity around the bishop who teaches and who governs and who sanctifies. Cardinal Donardo is now incensing the altar. The incense is a sign and a symbol of the fragrance of our prayer ascending to the Lord. And the altar is the center of the incensing because on that altar will be brought bread and wine, which will become the Lord's Supper, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ during the celebration of the Eucharist. Catholic worship is divided at the Mass into a penitential rite and into the celebration of the Word, the celebration of the Eucharist, and then the sharing of Holy Communion. One of the first things that will occur is the presentation of Bishop Tukes and the request that he be ordained 
by Cardinal Donardo. to Cardinal Donardo Din is Bishop Hillary. Now you're seeing Bishop-elect Toops on your screen. And on the right side of the uh, Cardinal is Bishop Burns from Dallas. He and Bishop Gallery are co-consecrators. And of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Another welcome. Yesterday evening, I mentioned that I would give a Texas welcome, howdy, and a Eastern border uh, welcome, bienvenue à mes amis. And now I will do a welcome uh, in Spanish, or at least attempt to, anyway. Hoy quiero dar la bienvenida a Monsignor Tups, a mis hermanos obispos, sacerdotes, diáconos y a todos en español. Lengua en la que el primer aparición es, se convirtió en un ejemplo de discípulo misionero. Mi español no es, no es perfecto ni tan bueno como el del sexto obispo de Boma, <laughs> pero creé, creo que la gente me entiende. Se ríen cuando digo un chiste o al menos eso me hacen creer a, la mejor, a lo mejor serían porque no me entienden. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, David, on behalf of the faithful of our diocese, I want to say how grateful we are for your presence in our diocese. I remember so clearly when I was sitting where you are, 32 years ago. Right after my ordination, a retired bishop uh, told me what happened to him and that I ought to keep that in mind when I retire. And he said, uh, Curtis, you know, when I retired, uh, or when I was, when the time had come to retire, people were telling me, oh, we're gonna miss you so much. And, you know, we love you, and he would say, thank you. Then finally, at the closing mass, at the farewell mass, he says, look, the Pope is going to send you a dynamic, articulate, creative young bishop. A lady in the back raised her hand and she said, that's what they told us the last time. <laughs> but David, that's not the case in your case. Oh well. <laughs> I want to welcome our Metropolitan Archbishop Daniel Cardinal Dinaro. Archbishop of Galveston, Houston. He will be the principal consecrator of Bishop-elect Toops. Cardinal Dinaro, it is an honor 
to always have you in the Diocese of Boma. We also want to welcome Bishop Edward Burns, the Bishop of Dallas, who with me will be a co-consecrator. I also want to extend a fraternal welcome to all my brother bishops who are with us today. In particular, unfortunately cannot be here, Archbishop Gustavo Garcias, Garcia Sia, Archdiocese of, of San Antonio, the first Metropolitan See of Texas. Also, Archbishop Emeritus Joseph Urenza, our native son, and they both, uh, David, send their, their love and their congratulations. I am so pleased to see that we are able to welcome so many clergy. I know many other clergy as well as lay and religious would have liked to have been here with us today, but the pandemic had other ideas. It is welcome, it is wonderful to welcome Monsignor Joseph Foro, second consular to Archbishop Christophe Pierre, the Apostolic Nuncio to the United States, and also uh, the personal representative of the Holy Father to the bishops. We thank you, Monsignor Foro, for bringing us the greetings of Archbishop Pierre and the special blessing of Pope Francis. Please express to our Holy Father our gratitude for sending us bishop like Tooth. And please express as well our love and fidelity. David, I am pleased to welcome your family, your sister Vicky, her husband Russell, your brother Mike and his wife Leanne your nieces and nephews, and the rest of your extended family. I am sure your mother and father, Mary and Leon Toops, are with us today. Looking down from heaven, I am confident they are thanking God that you, David, will be given an abundance of graces today as you are entrusted with the awesome responsibility of being a bishop. I am glad that we were able to invite representatives of deacons and their wives, interreligious and ecumenical leaders, civil and elected officials, as well as representatives of the Knights and Ladies of the Holy Sepulchre, Malta, St. Peter Claver, and the Knights of Columbus. David, I am confident that you will find, as I did, that the faith and goodwill of this general generous Dawson family will bring about a very fruitful harvest. Our Catholics are rooted in a great love for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You would also find that all the people of Southeast Texas, people of many faiths, many ethnicities, many cultures, work together for the common good. David, reflecting on our first conversation over the phone, you told me that the first scripture you learned from your mother was Romans 8, 28. All things work together for the good for those who love God. I mentioned to you that that is my Episcopal motto, which also came from my mother. I was in seminary and both of my parents were in the hospital during harvest time. I called my parents and told them I was coming home to help take in the harvest, being the oldest of 16 children. My mother asked if I felt I had a vocation. I said, I think so. She responded, stay where you are and pray for us. God will work it out. And he did. Neighbors came together to help to in the crops. When you ask me if you could use Romans 8 as your Episcopal motto, of course I said yes, but not only yes, with tears and a heart filled with joy. So thank you for using or continuing to use that wonderful passage 
As I share our, our story of, of God's providence, I cannot help but think of Paul's encouragement to Timothy in these words. Remember the faith you learned from your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. As you have said, David, it is a sign that you are called to this vineyard to continue to build on the works of your predecessors. Romans 8 has carried me and the people of Southeast, Southeast Texas through many times of joys, but as well as challenges and sorrows. But in the end, it really was all joy. And I know that that passage you will reflect upon many times, and it will carry you and your people all the way. And now, my brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit is waiting on us. Let us begin. And now the presentation of the candidate uh, Bishop-elect Toops will be made to Cardinal DiNardo. Reverendísimo Padre, la Iglesia de Beaumont le pide que ordene a este sacramento a este sacerdote, David Leon Toops, a la responsabilidad del Episcopado. Most Reverend Father, the Church of Beaumont asks you to ordain this priest, David Leon Toops, to the responsibility of the Episcopate. Have you a mandate from the Apostolic See? We have. Then let it be read. from the Holy Father appointing David Toops as the Bishop of Beaumont is now being shown to the diocesan consultors, to the bishops, to the priests, the deacons, and the faithful. It is a Latin document that will be preserved and authenticates the authority that Bishop Toops will have over the church in Southeast Texas of the Catholic faithful. Bishop Killery said that his Spanish is not really perfect. I have to confess that in my case, my English is even worse. <laughs> Imagine my Spanish, but I will try to do my best to read first some remarks and then the translation of the apostolic letter. Your Eminence Cardinal Daniel DiNardo, Metropolitan Archbishop of Galveston, Houston, Your Excellency Bishop Curtis Killory, Your Excellency Bishop-elect David Toops, Your Archbishops and Bishops, Priests, Deacons, Consecrated Religious and Lay Faithful of the Diocese of Pomon, dear friends. I am truly pleased to be with you today in this Venerable Cathedral Basilica of St. Anthony, as Monsignor David Toops, a priest of the Diocese of St. Petersburg, is consecrated as the sixth Bishop of Pomon. Monsignor Toops has distinguished himself as a pastor, a theologian, as a collaborator with the Episcopal Conference, and as the rector of St. Vincent Regional Seminary in Boynton Beach. And now, the Holy Father has called him to shepherd this local church. Bishop Alec Toops, I extend to you the cordial greetings, heartfelt congratulations, and best wishes of Archbishop Christoph Pierre, the Apostolic Nuncio to the United States of America, who regrets that he could not be here for this celebration. Quisiera saludar también todos de lengua española aquí presentes o quienes se unen a nosotros a través de YouTube, otro medio de la comunicación moderna. 
Es un gran placer para mí estar hoy con ustedes para celebrar la ordenación episcopal del nuevo obispo de esta querida diócesis de Beaumont. Quisiera también asegurar a todos ustedes de la cercanía espiritual del Santo Padre, Papa Francisco, de sus oraciones, en primer lugar para el nuevo obispo, Monseñor David, y para esta querida diócesis, la comunidad diocesana, y de su bendición apostólica. Your Excellency, Bishop Elect Tups, elect maybe for 15 more minutes. As you begin your mission as a bishop in this great state of Texas, I place before you the words of our Holy Father, which he spoke a few years ago to those to be consecrated as bishops. I quote, In the church entrusted to you, be faithful custodians and dispensers of the mysteries of Christ. As the Father has placed you at the head of his family, always follow the example of the Good Shepherd, who knows his sheep. Behind every document, there is a person. Behind every letter that you receive, there is a person. May these people be known by you, and may you be capable of knowing them." End of quotation. It is this family of God, the Church of Pomont, whom you will come to know and love. You are charged with leading them to that beautiful mountain to encounter Christ, the radiance and splendor of the Father, where together all may cry out, it is good for us to be here. Finally, I would be remiss if I did not express our profound gratitude to Bishop Killory, who has served as ordinary here for two decades. Yesterday we were in Alexandria. Bishop Tully served there for two years, so here we have two decades. He has faithfully guided this diocese in difficult times, including through the trauma of Hurricane Harvey. He has been a generous and welcoming pastor to the new immigrants, and he has been a faithful steward of the mysteries of God. Your Excellency, thank you. And now, with great joy, I will read for you an English translation of the Apostolic Letter of Appointment. Francis, Bishop, servant of the servants of God, to our beloved son, David Leon Tups, from the clergy of the Diocese of St. Petersburg, and up to now, rector of the Regional Major Seminary in Boynton Beach, Florida, appointed Bishop of Pomon, greetings and apostolic blessing. We are called to be the salt of the earth, but if salt should lose its taste, with what can it be seasoned? We are called to be the light of the world, a light shining before men and women, so that they may see our good deeds and glorify our Heavenly Father, who is our light, our salvation, and our life's refuge. It is with this resolve that we exercise our ministry as we strive, as zealously as possible, to foster the piety of the faithful and to provide for the salvation of souls. Accordingly, We turn our attention to the spiritual needs of the Diocese of Pomont, which is currently vacant, owing to the resignation of its former ordinary, our venerable brother, Curtis John Guillory, a member of the Society of the Divine Word, and which awaits a new Chief Shepherd and Director of Diocesan Life, by whose evangelical witness the people of God may be abundantly nourished. Consequently, we thought of you, beloved son, who having achieved great deal in the exercise of your pastoral offices and in the formation of priests, have clearly shown yourself to be greatly endowed with pastoral experience as well as the priestly and human qualities which render you suitable for undertaking these responsibilities. Therefore, Upon consultation with the Congregation for Bishops, by our apostolic authority, we appoint you Bishop of Pomont. 
granting to you the due rights and also imposing the relative obligations. You may receive episcopal ordination from any Catholic bishop anywhere outside the city of Rome, the liturgical norms being observed. However, prior to this, you must make the profession of faith and take the oath of fidelity toward us and our successors in accordance with the norms of ecclesiastical law. It is our wish that you inform the clergy and the people of this ecclesial community about this our decree, and we cordially exhort them to regard you as their guardian and teacher to be supported. May Almighty God, the creator and ruler of all things, from whom every good thing proceeds, be gracious to this flock, so that under his inspiration it may know what is right, and under your leadership do the same. Given at Rome at the Lateran, on the ninth day of the month of June, in the year of the Lord 2020, the eighth of our pontificate, and the letter is signed, Francis. Thanks be to God. The priest who was showing the mandate to the cardinal and bishops and the faithful is Father Shane Baxter, who is a vicar general of the Diocese of Roma. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, my words, <coughs> what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Thank you. 
Let us pray. O oh God, who out of the abundance of your untold grace alone choose to set your servant and priest David over your church of Beaumont this day, grant that he may carry out worthily the office of bishop and under your governance in all things he may direct by word and example the people and trusted to his care <clears throat> through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever The penitential rite is completed and the opening prayer. Now we move to the celebration of the word. The first reading will be from Romans, I'm sorry, from Jeremiah, followed by a reading from Romans. Lectura del libro del profeta Jeremías Me llegó una palabra de Yahvé Antes de formarte en el seno de tu madre Ya te conocía Antes de que tú nacieras Yo te consagré Y te destiné a ser profeta de las naciones Yo exclamé Ay, Señor ya ve, ¿cómo podría hablar yo que soy un muchacho? Y ya ve, me contestó, no me digas que eres un muchacho, irás a donde quiera que te envíe y proclamarás todo lo que yo te mande. No les tengas miedo, porque estaré contigo para protegerte. Palabra de Yahvé. Entonces, Yahvé extendió su mano y me tocó la boca diciéndome, en este momento pongo mis palabras en tu boca. Palabra de Dios. Te alabamos, Señor. And now there will be a responsorial psalm, Psalm 22. Oh, 
callado me sosiega A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. We know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? 
As it is written, for your sake we are being slain all the day. We are looked upon as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The two lectors were Miguel Angel Leva and Mrs. Beverly Escamilla. And now preparations are being made for the proclamation of the Holy Gospel. Cardinal Gennaro is placing incense into the censer and the Book of Gospels will be picked up by the deacon carried to the pulpit. according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, Son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? 
Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing, friends, as we sing together the great hymn for the opening of the ordination rite, Veni Creator Spiritus. sacrament of the Eucharist, which we are now celebrating. As the song comes to an end, the final verse is, May there always be glory given to God the Father and to the Son who rose from the dead and to the most holy paraclete. Oh. 
He is now seated, and Cardinal Donato will question Bishop Alec. If you looked in their booklets, the singing of that beautiful hymn uh, was to follow the homily, and so since they started singing, because of my mistake, I guess you thought, thank God we'd be saved from him preaching. Too bad. <laughs> Diligentibus Deum Omnia Cooperantur. To those who love God, all things work together. These are the words of the coat of arms, the motto of Bishop Curtis Guillory, the retiring and almost retired bishop in his hour of retirement in the Diocese of Beaumont after serving nobly for 20 years. As you know now, most interesting are those very words on Bishop Elect Toop's coat of arms, his coat of arms, or to those who love God, all things work together, and he adds in bone for good. They are the same text, different languages, Latin and English. The mottos are a scriptural quote from St. Paul's great, great letter to the Romans. There is great continuity here and great difference that is enriching and rewarding, rewarding for the people of Beaumont, for the priests and deacons, religious and clergy and, and faithful. Bishop Curtis, you have helped your priests, deacons, religious and faithful appreciate how things come together when you love God and you cooperate. This cathedral building itself, the pastoral center, other projects, visitations, new parishes, all have been realized with the shepherd's guidance and a willing flock that, accompany, that accompanies you. There have been some real troubles here, especially those infernal hurricanes, whose rumors I hear may be circling about even now. These have been tough years for the Diocese of Beaumont, as for all of Southeast Texas. And yet, you and your people have been resilient. As you heard from Bishop Guillory today, there's never an occasion where you don't have a story, an analogy, something from your time, either as a member of the Divine Word Society or from with your in your family in Louisiana. <clears throat> Bishop Curtis, you always accompany everything with a good story, uh, usually with a nice punch in it. For all these things, all these things have worked together. You have shown great love for God. Many thanks, Bishop Guillory, from this community, and may God bless you all the days of your life. Bishop Elect Toops, for to those who love God, all things work together for good. It is good that our Holy Father has chosen you to shepherd Beaumont. I know both the delight and yet the sadness that you and your family in Florida have all felt in these recent days. Your sense of losing your home diocese but gaining another local church. The many smiles and farewells and challenges of recent days, and I'm sure there have been their share of tears and some sadness. The entire text today from St. Paul's letter to the Romans is our second reading. It is a most powerful and evocative piece of depth. It is really and truly a rhapsody, a rhapsody of God's love. Right before today's passage, Paul says all creation is groaning. Even the spirit is groaning until now. 
The groaning is everything, all of us and all creation, in solidarity. First over the grand dysfunction and distortion and alienation that sin has hurled into the world. Creation groans, but we who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we are also groaning in, in some sorrow, but also in initial joy. The Spirit groans in us because we see the seeds of hope now planted by the death and resurrection of Jesus. These are sighs of sadness and initial sighs of rejoicing. We are all in solidarity, and we hope that the final glory will come soon. The Spirit groans with us in pre-grammatical cries and also in very grammatical sentences. You will hear the groans of the, of the Spirit in those very grammatical sentences in the prayer of consecration that we will pray over you. The church never stops, not conjuring, but begs the Holy Spirit to come down. In some churches of the East, before they do this prayer, all the priests and people and bishops kneel down. They're invoking groans. Your motto is important then. It sees God constantly working for the good of those who love and are called to be part of God's providential plan. In a few moments, <clears throat> the bishops and I will lay hands on you, David, and then a gospel book will be placed over your head. I will proclaim the ordination prayer dating back to the fourth century and invoke the Holy Spirit upon you, and all of us will utter words of the spirit of governance, thus calling, this calling of the spirit, constant in our liturgical tradition, will be centered on you this afternoon, David. Afterwards, he will be the center of your own, calling down of him on the entire church in Beaumont, day by day, in prayer, countless other ways, in ordinations, whatever it may be. Pope Francis has said that such a governing spirit is to be one of accompaniment, one that reaches out to the peripheries from the center and in every part of the center and the peripheries. The spirit of governance is groaning and making coherent sentences. And this spirit is going to rest upon you, David. The spirit is at times grammatical and sometimes more inchoate. We want to hear the cries of the spirit in many today, in their groans. <clears throat> there are sighs and groans of those who are victims of racism, a phenomenon in our culture and our church that has become very intense this summer, and we are convinced that we must be confront it, and we must bring healing and harmony. There are also sighs and groans among those suffering in this pandemic. Some of them are from physical sickness, some of them from alienation, some of them from sheer worry whether there will be enough money. There is even that groan of sighing in our churches as we worry about keeping them going. Yes, it is a difficult time coming, and we embrace it all in God's providence because it all works for good. You are new to Texas, uh, David. I myself uh, took a while to come down here, and uh, you're, you're here now, and it's always nice to come to Texas. Uh, but we have some issues here where the spirit is groaning. Immigration and detention issues. We have dealt with these for many parts here, many times here in the Catholic Church, and we want to continue our work. There are groans of the spirit. Health care. We have a very important phenomenon in Texas that you must also be a part of with the other bishops. That is capital punishment. It's a problem here, and we work at it all the time, but the groanings continue. There are many unheard voices, voices that are exploited. In addition, there are those not only who are exploited, but who don't even have a name yet. These are our unborn children. They cry out. 
Respect for the human person is on your docket now, David. We also encounter within our church today the scourge of sexual abuse, which you as a new bishop must take care so that this is eradicated and we work on it in every Catholic community. Cooperation and collaboration, those are the key words. They're words, I believe, accompaniment of the spirit that you will do and you have great talents to do it and uh, it will be necessary. First, you must collaborate with your priests. They, uh, you know a lot about that. I don't have to talk to you, David, about priests. You've been dealing with them for the last many years as a seminary rector. But now you have your own priests. Uh, they're going to call you father. They'll need you. So you have to be with them, collaborate with them, with the deacons, with religious and faithful. And amongst those, all those people, if I might say, there's also something, uh, an issue that comes in terms of the, the language that you will speak. Uh, Bishop Guillory, I was so surprised today to hear you speak the uh, Spanish muy bien, it's, uh, but uh, David, you know it well. And that will be a particular charge as this diocese grows in the numbers of its Hispanic people. In addition, the groans and sighs of the Spirit are pouring forth to beg you to come along in ecumenical and interfaith traditions and work for the common good civilly of this community and with civil authorities. You know that's always necessary and important. So, you've got a good shepherding task ahead of you today, David. Um, my, my. But your, uh, your shepherding has a hashtag line. It's the gospel. It can be Bishop David Toop's hashtag line from now on. Do you love me? Feed the sheep. No special explanation further is needed. We don't have to go into a long disquisition. Do you love me? Be the sheep. David, you can't do better than Jesus. Do you love him? Yes, I love him, you say. Then, David, as of today, feed the sheep. time for the questioning of the bishop-elect. The ancient rule of the Holy Fathers ordains that a bishop-elect is to be questioned in the presence of the people on his resolve to uphold the faith and to discharge his duty. And so, dear brother, you resolve by the grace of the Holy Spirit to discharge until death the office entrusted to us by the apostles, which we are about to pass on to you by the laying on of hands. I do. Do you resolve to preach the gospel of Christ with constancy and fidelity? I do. Do you resolve to guard the deposit of faith entire and incorrupt as my, handed down by the apostles and preserved in the church everywhere and at all times? I do. Do you resolve to build up the body of Christ, his church, and to remain in the unity of that body together with the order of bishops under the authority of the successor of St. Peter the Apostle? I do. Do you resolve to render obedience faithfully to the successor of the blessed Apostle Peter? I do. Do you resolve to guide the holy people of God in the way of salvation as a devoted father and sustain them with the help of your fellow ministers, the priests and deacons. I do. Do you resolve for the sake of the Lord's name to be welcoming and merciful to the poor, to strangers, and to all who are in need? I do. 
Do you resolve as a good shepherd to seek out the sheep who stray and gather them into the Lord's fold? I do. Do you resolve to pray without ceasing to Almighty God for the holy people and to carry out the office of high priest without reproach? I do with the help of God. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. And now there, <clears throat> and now there follows the most powerful prayer of supplication of the people of God, as the litany of Dearly saints beloved, let us will pray be that the kindness of Almighty God in providing for the welfare of the church, will grant an abundance of his grace for this chosen one. Oops will now lay prone on the floor, beseeching the Spirit of God and the saints and angels of God to intercede for him.
Graciously hear our petitions, O Lord, and pour out upon this your servant the power of your blessing, flowing from the horn of priestly grace through Christ our Lord. We approach the moment of the conferring of the Sacrament of Holy Orders to the rank of Bishop. Bishop elect Dukes will kneel before Cardinal Donardo, who will be the first to lay hands on him. Now, and now the co-consecrating bishops will lay hands. To be followed by the other bishops who are present. All of these bishops have themselves been in that same position receiving the imposition of hands from bishops who welcome the newly ordained bishop into the College of Bishops with our Holy Father, the Pope, the Bishop of Rome as the head of that college. This is a moment of great faith for Bishop Toops. St. Paul writes, we walk by faith and not by sight. He undertakes the leadership of a local church, not knowing the future. And he faces that future, surrounded and assisted by his priests and deacons and the laity. And trusting greatly in the heart of Jesus Christ and the intercession of the saints. And now, following the imposition of hands, will come the prayer of ordination. And the combination of the imposition and the prayer are the sacrament of holy orders 
or the rank of bishop. I'm sure he must be thinking of his parents and their good family life together. His sister, his brother, all of those who have taught him, guided him, loved him, prepared him for this moment. The priests and deacons who are observing this ordination are recalling the moment of their own ordination to the order of deacon or to the order of priest. Knowing how helpless one feels at this moment, taking on those duties, and at the same time, surrendering himself to the guidance and the mercy and the assistance of God. The Holy Gospels are now held above the head of the bishop as he is to present the whole gospel in its fullness with all of the demands and promises offered. God, our Father, our Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, who dwell on high and look upon the lowly, who know all things before they come to be, and who laid down observances in your church throughout the word, through the word of your grace, who from the beginning foreordained a nation of the just, born of Abraham, who established rules and priests, and did not leave your sanctuary without ministers, and who from the foundation of the world were pleased to be glorified in those you have chosen. Pour out now upon this chosen one that power which is from you, the governing spirit whom you gave to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, the Spirit whom he bestowed upon the holy apostles who established the church in each place as your sanctuary for the glory and unceasing praise of your name. Grant, O oh Father, knower of all hearts, that this your servant whom you have chosen for the office of bishop may shepherd your holy flock, serving you night and day. May he fulfill before you without reproach the ministry of the high priesthood, so that always gaining your favor, he may offer up the gifts of your holy church. Grant that by the power of the spirit of the high priesthood, he may have the power to forgive sins according to your command, assign offices according to your decree, and loose every bond according to the power given by you to the apostles. May he please you by his meekness and purity of heart, presenting a fragrant offering to you 
through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom glory and power and honor are yours with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever and ever. Now, Bishop Toops will be anointed with the oil of chrism used at baptism, confirmation, the ordination of priests, and the ordination of bishops. The oil has been consecrated during Holy Week and brings the anointing of the Holy Spirit to its fullness for this new bishop of the church. May God, who has made you a sharer of the high priesthood of Christ, himself pour out upon you <clears throat> the oil of mystical anointing and make you fruitful with an abundance of spiritual blessings. is now going to clean his forehead of the sacred chrism that has been put on there, on his forehead, anointing him. Then he will return and receive the insignia that accompanied the office of bishop. The first thing he will receive is the ring of a bishop, a sign of his bond with the people of God, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ. And this ring was prepared by melting down the wedding rings of his mother and father. And out of that was fashioned the bishop's ring, which will soon be given to the bishop. His brother and his sister arranged to have the rings melted for this most special occasion. The bishop has returned. Receive the gospel and preach the word of God with all patience and sound teaching. Receive this ring the seal of fidelity, adorned with undefiled faith, preserve unblemished the bride of God, the Holy Church. And now the mitre will be imposed upon his Receive head. Receive the mitre. And may the splendor of holiness the 
splendor of holiness shine forth in you so that when the chief shepherd appears, you may deserve to receive from him an unfading crown of glory. And now the shepherd's staff. Receive the crozier, the sign of your pastoral office, and keep watch over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as bishop to govern the church of God. Stand. All right, next is the fraternal kiss. They're going to lead him to the chair. So everybody's following the table. Now he is being led to the bishop's chair by Cardinal DiNardo. And as he takes his seat in the bishop's chair, it symbolizes his taking charge of the Diocese of Roman as one who teaches, governs, and sanctifies. And now, a fraternal embrace from all of the bishops as he has joined the College of Bishops throughout the world. There are about 3,000, 3,500 bishops throughout the world who are in charge of the local churches the dioceses. The Diocese of Beaumont consists of nine counties with a total general population of about 643,000 people and a Catholic population of about 70,000, making the Catholic presence about 10.5% of the general population. The counties are Chambers, Harden, Jasper, Jefferson, Liberty, Newton, Orange, Polk, and Tyler, and are a total of 7,878 square miles. There are in the Diocese of Beaumont 62 priests who are active in ministry 
45 permanent deacons, religious women whom we call sisters, 20, seminarians studying for the priesthood are six in number, and the men who are studying to be permanent deacons are in the number of 13. the presence of the Holy Spirit and the prayer of the church, the bread and wine will become for us the body and blood of Christ. Bishop Toops is the sixth bishop of the Diocese of Beaumont, the first being Bishop Vincent Harris from 1966 to 1971. Bishop Warren Boudreau from 1971 to 1977. Bishop Bernard Ganter from 1977 to 1993. Bishop Joseph Galanti from 1994 to 1999. And Bishop Curtis Gill, now Bishop Emeritus from 2000 to 2020. And those are his family members his sister and brother and their spouses who have carried the wine and the bread to the chair of the bishop. The deacons have now taken the, the bread and wine and are setting the altar in preparation for the Eucharistic prayer. was the youngest of three children. He grew up in Homa, Louisiana. He's a Cajun. His family moved to Clearwater, Florida when he was in high school. He then went to Florida Southern College to prepare to study law. And then he decided in the midst of that to enroll in the seminary, St. John Vianney College Seminary in Miami, Florida. When he completed his philosophical studies, he was sent to Rome to the Pontifical North American College, studying at the Pontifical Gregorian University from 1993 until 1998. He was ordained a priest in 1997 in the Diocese of St. Petersburg, Florida. He was an associate pastor at St. Francis Cabrini Church for four years. Then he returned to Rome to complete his doctoral studies at the University of St. Thomas Aquinas. He returned with his doctorate in dogmatic theology, and he began to teach and be the Dean of Students at St. Vincent de Paul Regional Seminary from 2004 to 2007. And then for three years, from 2007 to 2010, he served at the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops in Washington, D.C., in the Secretariat for Clergy, Consecrated Life, and Vocations. Returning to his home diocese of St. Petersburg, he was named pastor of Christ the King Church in Tampa, where he ministered for two years before being named rector and president of the seminary where he had previously taught for the past eight years. He is responsible for numerous articles and the author of two books, Reclaiming Our Priestly Character and 
the priest we need. The rector speaks to his seminarians. Both published by the Institute for Priestly Formation. On June the 9th, Pope Francis named him the sixth bishop of the Diocese of Boma. At the very young age of 49, he takes on the great ministry of the bishop. At present, he is offering the bread and the wine in preparation for the Eucharistic prayer. is once again being prepared now that the bread and wine have been offered in preparation for the sacrifice of the Mass. The bishop will offer the incense as a symbol of our prayer rising before the throne of God. sensing the crucifix for we are presenting again in each mass the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The bishops and priests will be incensed, the deacons as well, and then the entire assembly will be given the incense as a symbol of their prayer of joy with the universal church, ascending before the majesty of God, invoking mercy, grace, salvation for the human family. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, from the deepening of our service of you so that what you have conferred on us, unworthy as we are, 
that we may graciously bring to fulfillment through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood, the people he has made his own. But with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become shares in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption to set before the, your children the Paschal Banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the Word, and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you, and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, 
that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, especially the family of Bishop Toops, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for me, your unworthy servant, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of bishops. And in your mercy, keep safe your gifts in me, so that what I have received by divine commission, I may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar, similar way, way, when supper, supper was, was ended, ended he, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and, and once more giving you thanks, thanks he said the blessing, blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servant, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. With also your servants, who those sinners, Hope in your abundant mercy, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Peter, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Petra, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all of them. Admit us in the you into their company, not waive our merits but granting us your hope in Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
receiving the body and blood of Christ. The faithful of the Catholic Church are united to Christ in his passion, his death, and his resurrection from the dead. For the Christ they are receiving in Holy Communion is the risen Lord. When one takes the host and drinks the cup, one receives the Lord in all of his infinite beauty and glory. The risen Christ, set free from the bonds of death. And as St. Paul says, Christ became sin for us, that we might become the holiness of God. And when Christ died, he died in our sin, he carried our sin into death. And when he rose, our sin was destroyed, and he came back to bring to the human family the saving grace of God, the Almighty Father. In receiving the Eucharist, we are united to one another in the assembly and throughout the world. A Catholic goes into any church in the world that is Catholic and knows that he or she is at home because we all profess the same creed. We are all in union with the Bishop of Rome and our own bishop. So this is our understanding of the church as universal and as one, and as apostolic, grounded in the teaching of the apostles. The chaplains to Bishop Toots are Monsignor Roberto Garza, of the Diocese of Miami, and Father Wayne Sattler, of the Diocese of Brunswick, South Dakota. The three priests who carried the Episcopal insignia to be given to the new bishop are Monsignor John Sippel from the Diocese of St. Petersburg. He brought the crozier the shepherd's staff, Father Luis Uritza, an Augustinian priest, pastor of Cristo Rey Church here in Beaumont. And if I'm not mistaken, Father Uritza is 98 years old and still a pastor and very busy. And he brought the ring and Father Andrew Moore, the former president of the Presbyterian Council, representing the priest and also pastor of Infant Jesus Church in Lumberton, carried the mitre. The masters of ceremony are Father Matthew Suniga from the Archdiocese of Galveston, Houston, and Deacon David Luther, of the Diocese of Beaumont. The altar servers are Aaron Griffith, Max Medina, Juan Perales, Will Robbins, Jacob Thomas, Thomas Vu all seminarians of the Diocese of Boma. The music director is Rosalind Sanchez of the Office of Worship of the Diocese of Boma. The diocesan scola performed the accompaniment by Mr. Justin Sanders Mrs. Darla Lawless and Debbie Perhoda.
The Diocese of Beaumont is under the leadership, the metropolitan leadership of the Archbishop of Galveston, Houston. And as metropolitan, the Archbishop works with six, the Bishop of six other dioceses, Austin, Tyler, Beaumont, Victoria, Corpus Christi, and Brownsville. There is another archdiocese in the state of Texas, San Antonio. And the Archbishop of San Antonio is the metropolitan for the dioceses of Laredo, El Paso, San Angelo, Lubbock, Amarillo, Fort Worth, and Dallas. So there are 14 dioceses in the state of Texas. been a presentation of 12 News and KJAC NBC, produced and directed by those good folks who have been very helpful to all of us. This is a truly happy day for us, and it is good that Bishop Gallery, Bishop Emeritus, will continue to live in Burma and be available to us as friend, confessor, guide. And I'm sure that Bishop Toops will be conferring with Bishop Gillery frequently as he acquaints himself with the Diocese of Beaumont. He plans to have immediate visits to parishes to offer Mass, to meet with parish councils and their pastors, and to acquaint himself as soon as possible with the good people of this diocese. The entire planning for the Mass and all of the events associated with the ordination and installation of Bishop Toops involved all of the departments of the Diocese of Beaumont. The department heads collaborated with the Office of Book of General and once again have brought forth a beautiful celebration of our faith and our hope and our trust. So I want to thank all of you who are joining us on television, Channel 12 News, those who are watching through the streaming, the live streaming. For those of you who could not be with us because of the pandemic, I hope you were able to watch and to be with us. Mr. Roger Bemis, the soloist for today and the former principal of Monsignor Kelly High School. There are 
so many people involved in what we are doing. I know I'm leaving out some names. But I want to say to all of you, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Justin Sanders is the accompanist from St. Elizabeth Parish in Port Natchez. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. the recession. The new bishop blessing the faithful, carrying the sign of his office, the shepherd's staff, is leading the procession out. And you're getting one final look at St. Anthony Cathedral Basilica, beautifully restored under the direction of Monsignor Jerry McGrath of the cathedral and his staff. Visitors come from all over to visit this unique little cathedral basilica. And you're welcome, if you're ever in Boma, to come by.
How about that? <laughs> Thank you, dude. Thank you, Emily. Gaudium et spes, joy and hope. This is the title of the last document of the Second Vatican Council and my sentiments today. Our world needs the joy and hope of Jesus Christ now more than ever. I'm so very conscious of the people who could not be with us due to the restrictions of the coronavirus. Thank you for joining us via live stream. So many members of my family and friends, so many representatives of our 42 beautiful parishes, so many of our permanent deacons and their wives. It breaks my heart that we could not have a true diocesan-wide celebration. But these are the days in which we live. And so we proclaim in the midst of it all that Jesus Christ is our hope and our joy. And to all of you who were actually able to travel here at great cost and sacrifice, thank you for being with me and praying for me in the Diocese of Beaumont on this historic day. I wish to offer gratitude to God with praise and thanksgiving for having called me to himself in baptism, priesthood, and today the episcopacy. Unworthy though I am, God has called me to this mission through the successor of St. Peter, Pope Francis. Muchísimas gracias, Santo Padre, por su paternidad y por su confianza. On March 13th of 2013, our Holy Father began his pontificate with the profoundly humble and grace-filled gesture of asking the Universal Church to pray over him. And today, since we are scattered around our diocese and around our country, I ask the same of you. Pope Francis said, And now, I would like to give the blessing, but first, first I ask a favor of you. Before the bishop blesses his people, I ask you to pray to the Lord that he will bless me. The prayer of the people asking the blessing for their bishop. Let us make in silence this prayer, your prayer over me. The Lord is my shepherd. I've been praying this Psalm 23 an awful lot lately, and every verse of this great psalm brings me comfort. With these words, David, the little shepherd boy, defined his life and his legacy. He knew that even though he had been called to shepherd Israel, it was the Lord who was actually the one in charge. This little shepherd boy, also named David, commends the flock of the Diocese of Beaumont in southeast Texas to our one true shepherd, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. He will lead us through these difficult days, this dark valley, this valley of the shadow of death, to bright and verdant pastures where he will give us repose. Thus we fear no evil because God is at our side with his crook and with his staff which gives us comfort. 
The same psalmist who wrote Psalm 23 also wrote Psalm 51, the Miserere. King David knew he was a sinner and that left to his own designs and reliant on his own strength, he would fail. As your bishop, David, I pray today that I do not rely upon my own gifts and strengths, but rather allow God to lead us and shepherd us. This David wants to cry out with his namesake, Give me again the joy of your help. With a spirit of fervor, sustain me. Beaumont is by no means my diocese. In fact, it isn't even your diocese. It is God's verdant pasture. And together, we will labor to continue to build it up as good stewards of what has been entrusted to our care. I so look forward to getting to know our beautiful and ethnically diverse population, being attentive to the needs of our day, working to end racism and violence as together we journey to a more just and peaceful society, and serving our community in whatever ways are needed. A la comunidad hispana, soy su obispo para servirles en el nombre de Jesucristo. Espero que la iglesia será siempre su casa y lugar de refugio. Que nuestra Señora de Guadalupe nos protege y guíe a nuestra casa celestial. Pope Francis has called us to be missionary disciples and to continue the evangelizing mission in the world. Together, as a family of faith, we stand united as a light in the midst of these dark times, trusting that the Lord, who is our true shepherd, will lead us through these challenging days. I've been told that with everything going on, there's probably never been a worse time to become a bishop. Global pandemic, racial tensions, economic decline, immigration concerns, church scandals, divisions politically and ecclesially. Well, my response is, there's probably never been a better time because the challenges of our day offer us new opportunities to make Jesus Christ known in the world, which is so hungering and thirsting for him, even if they don't yet know it. For my message today is one of hope and joy, and that the Lord is our shepherd, and thus we shall fear no evil. Our prayers in a particular way go out to all of our medical professionals and first responders, as well as to our teachers and school children at the beginning of this academic year. Thank you for your essential service to our community. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, will guide us and we know that as Romans 8:28 promises, for those who love God, all things work together for the good. Now imagine for a moment if it's a challenging time to become a bishop. Well, what about the man who has been a bishop for 32 years and has been waiting patiently for his replacement? Bishop Curtis Guillory, my brother, thank you. Thank you for all you have done for Southeast Texas for these past two decades and for shepherding us through these challenging days. Not quite the smooth landing you were looking for, but it is the time that God has called each of us to serve. Now you can hand off the torch. Bishop Guillory is the only bishop that I'm aware of 
who has actually carried the Olympic torch as it traveled across our country in 1996. Today, you get to hand off the flame of faith that I promise to keep burning brightly in Southeast Texas. We are so very grateful that you will be remaining with us. And for all of the guidance that you have already offered to me, as today you hand off the baton. Again, let's thank Bishop Guillory for his years of service. Cardinal DiNardo, you're next. <laughs> Thank you for your fraternal welcome. And don't panic, I'm not going to greet every bishop individually. <laughs> Just a few of them. Your fraternal welcome to the ecclesiastical province of Galveston, Houston. From the first phone call, you put me at ease with your kind and gentle wit and that laughter made me feel right at home here in Texas. It's providential to note that today is a special feast for both of us, for whom now share the same Episcopal lineage. We certainly share in the line of many popes, bishops, and saints, which we know date all the way back to apostolic times. But today is the feast of St. Pius X, who at the turn of the 20th century was known for his Eucharistic devotion and love for the youth of the Church. He is in our line of apostolic succession, and I take that as a great grace and a further sign of God's providence for my call to be an apostle for this local Church. I've already recognized one of my co-consecrators, Bishop Guillory, but I must recognize the other, Bishop Edward Burns of the Diocese of Dallas. Very little did we know that when you hired me 13 years ago to be your associate director in Washington, D.C., that in the year 2020, we'd both be Texans. <laughs> Bishop Burns, through all of these year, years, you have been a mentor, confidant and friend, thank you. To my three bishops of St. Petersburg, Archbishop Favalora, who sent me to the seminary, Bishop Lynch, who ordained me a priest, and Bishop Parks, who up until about an hour ago was my bishop, you have each been a father, brother, and friend to me through these past 30 years and I thank you. To all of the bishops who were able to come and the many that were unable, thank you for your fraternal support. These days since the June 9th announcement have been quite remarkable to say the least, and the expression of support from my brother bishops has been an incredible grace and a source of strength. Monsignor Joseph Faro, representing Archbishop Christophe Pierre, our Apostolic Nuncio, I'm so grateful for your presence and the kindness that has been extended to me by Archbishop Pierre, who, as we heard, is celebrating 50 years of priesthood and 25 years of episcopacy with his family in France. Ad multos anos, Archbishop. To my brother priests, present and live streaming, thank you for truly being family to me, in particular my classmates and seminary colleagues. The fraternity of the priesthood is an incalculable gift that keeps us grounded in our identity with Christ as his servants for the people of God. Please join me 
in praying for the Diocese of Beaumont, that just as at Spindletop in 1901, which gushed forth an unprecedented volume of Texas tea, that our diocese may produce by God's grace abundant vocations to serve the needs of our local church for many years to come. The three priests who carried the Episcopal insignia also represent the beautiful face of Christ in the priesthood. Monsignor John Sippel carried the crozier, who quite appropriately has been the shepherd of my whole family for the past 35 years, and who is a constant source of wisdom and inspiration. He represents the priests of St. Petersburg who gave me the crozier as my ordination gift. This striking shepherd's staff was made by a permanent deacon of the Archdiocese of Miami, who I had the privilege to train, and so it has many beautiful layers of meaning. Padre Luis Oriza, who carried the mitre, has just celebrated 99 years of life and 75 years of priesthood. about an inspiration as he still leads the flock of Cristo Rey, where I will celebrate Mass Sunday night. Padre Luis, feliz cumpleaños y gracias por tu ejemplo de fidelidad en la viña del Señor. And Father Andy Moore, who carried in the ring, with whom I share the same year of priestly ordination, it's quite appropriate since he has been the chairman of the Presbyteral Council and thus represents the clergy and the faithful of the diocese to whom I am now wedded as your bishop. I very much look forward to learning from and walking with the priests, the deacons, the religious, and the faithful of Southeast Texas for many years to come. We're almost there, everybody. It's my party and I can cry if I want to. <laughs> to the staff of our pastoral center who have been working so very hard since my announcement to prepare the way for me. Thank you for your dedication to Christ and his church. I've been so impressed with your dedication and professionalism as we navigate the waters of global pandemic and at the same time stay focused on the joy and hope of the gospel. You are too many to thank individually. I know you're happy to hear that. But, as, but you know who you are, and at this point, more importantly, I know who you are. As I mentioned on June 9th in this exquisite cathedral basilica, the prettiest in the nation, by the way, to all of the faithful of the Diocese of Beaumont, today I am all yours, and I will strive to spend myself in your service and to love you as Christ loves his bride, the Church. Thank you for your support and warm Texas welcome. And let's hear it for all of those who have made this liturgy such a beautiful and prayerful celebration. And the words you've been waiting for, finally, to my family and friends. You are a gift to me, and I will continue to count on your friendship and your love for the whole of my life as I now live it out in my new vocation as a bishop. Friends here today represent my schooling in both Louisiana and Florida. I'm looking at them as I go down the row. Parishioners from previous 
parish assignments and as a seminary formator. I'm sincerely grateful for each of you. I know that my dear parents are looking down and smiling from ear to ear at the glorious liturgy of which they now celebrate in the fullness of the kingdom. Mom and Dad, thanks for all that you have given to Vicki and Michael and me. We are forever indebted to you for the faith and foundation you have given us, and we count on your prayers and your heavenly support. To Vicki, to Michael, and their wonderful and expanding families, Vicki became a grandmother one week ago, I love you with all of my heart, and I thank you for always supporting me as a brother and as a friend. Family is such a tremendous gift. May none of us ever take it for granted. I began with a request for prayer, and I wish to conclude with the same. In the words of the great bishop, St. Augustine, which he delivered 1,600 years ago on the anniversary of his own ordination. So let us pray together, dearly beloved, that my tenure as bishop may be one of profit both to me and to you. It will profit me if I tell you what has to be done, and you if you do what you hear. You see, if we all pray tirelessly, I for you and you for me, with perfect love of charity, we shall all happily attain, with the Lord's help, to eternal bliss. May he be graciously pleased to grant us this, who lives and reigns forever and ever. And as I conclude these words of gratitude, I ask the intercession of our Blessed Mother. For today is also the feast of Our Lady of Nock, that she might draw me and each of us ever closer to her divine Son, our Good Shepherd. Salve Regina. O God, who care for your people with gentleness and rule them in love, endow with the spirit of wisdom those to whom you have handed on authority to govern, that from the flourishing of the flock may come eternal joy for its shepherds. Amen. And as in your majestic power you our days, years, upon our humble and confer the abundance of peace. Give a happy outcome through your grace you have 
raise to the rank of pleasing to you and so that the obedience nor the care of the And may Almighty Faking frail on the next two and a half men. This is my final. Who 
killed Osama bin Laden. Fans, after refusing to wear a medal, the Golden State Killer is faking frailty. Do you think it's an act? And wait till you hear what he had to say. Ask. Plus, the Steve Bannon arrest woman finance her plastic donations to build the wall. Is this that I had plastic surgery? And woman who knocked on her neighbor's door. Why police are calling it a plot B. Then. Yeah. 500 to day camp. There you go. And to COVID all summer. It's a miracle. Right, that we can all learn from. Plus, who canceled their big wedding reception pandemic. Wait till you see what they did with... Now, with Deborah Norville. Hello, everybody. Us. The battle against COVID-19 is far from over. 174,000 people have died, but the cases is starting to slow. Experts say that thanks to swing and mass. So when this ex-Navy SEAL killing Osama bin Laden bragged about not wearing him, many people were furious. Jim Murray reports. Hero who killed Osama bin Laden is speaking banned from Delta Airlines for not wearing Former SEAL Team 6 member roasted this selfie aboard a Delta flight with the, and not a blank. Delta banned.